Hello, today we are going to talk about organic molecules and you have to know that all living things are made up of organic molecules. So in this lesson you will understand how the structures of living things depend on the molecules that make them up. Then we will list the types of molecules found in living organisms. But before, we have to know what is the meaning of organic molecules an organic molecules is one sorry an organic molecule is one which contains carbon so when the molecule contains carbon we call it organic so biological molecules such as carbohydrates or lipids carbohydrates lipids or proteins are called organic molecules because they have carbon in their structures okay now the question is why do organisms need organic molecules what do you think why do organisms need organic molecules you know that organic molecules such as carbohydrates provide energy to drive life processes, which are movement, reproduction, uh, respiration, whatever. And the second thing is to provide raw materials for the growth and repair of tissues if there is any problem inside the body. Okay, now there are four main groups of organic molecules or organic chemicals used by living things so the question is what are the main groups of organic chemicals used by living things actually as we said there are four as you see here we have four groups the first one carbohydrates fats proteins and the last thing here we have nucleic acid such as dna nucleic acid so now you have to know that living organisms contain organic and inorganic molecules so we say that it contains or living things need organic and also they need inorganic molecules organic as, such as carbohydrates proteins fats and inorganic such as water oxygen and some salts so living organisms contain organic and inorganic molecules now we are going to define five concepts which are biochemistry metabolism subunits hydrolysis and condensation and we have to know what we mean by each concept as we said before living organisms contain organic and inorganic molecules so the study of these organic and inorganic molecules that make up living organisms is called biochemistry so biochemistry is the study of these organic and inorganic molecules that make of living organisms and so and as you know that there are many chemical reactions also there are many chemical reactions inside our bodies such as digestion um, also thinking all that are chemical reactions so the sum of all the chemical reactions in the living organisms is called metabolism so here we have the second concept which is metabolism metabolism means the sum of all chemical reactions in living organisms now what about subunits the third concept subunits okay you know that the large molecules or the large organic molecules are made up of lots of similar smaller molecules those smaller molecules are called subunits for example protein is made up of 
amino acids. So amino acids are example of subunits. Or starch is made up of glucose subunits. So here I give two examples of subunits. The first one amino acid subunits and the second one glucose subunits. Now let's understand the last two concepts which are hydrolysis and condensation. So focus on this diagram please. In this diagram a rat takes molecules from its environment. Here we have rat and here are the plants in the environment. So the rat takes molecules from its environment and rearrange them into shapes that suit its requirements. So take the molecules and rearrange them to be suit to its requirements. Okay, so here there is a starch in maize, which is corn. When the rats eat maize, the starch in the maize will break down to smaller molecules. Here the small molecules are glucose or glucose subunits. Actually, this process happened by the addition of water. So we call this process hydrolysis. So again, the rat eat maize. The starch in maize will break down to smaller molecules by the addition of water. After that, and inside the rat's body, large molecules of glycogen are built up from glucose subunits by the removal of water. So when we remove the water, that will build up large molecules from smaller ones. And the example here, glycogen, are built up from glucose subunits. And this is a process called condensation or sometimes scientists call it dehydration. So when we remove the water from the large molecules, sorry, from the small molecules to produce large molecules, this process called condensation. So here hydrolysis and condensation are opposite processes. The first one hydrolysis, which is hydrosis, hydrolysis, Large molecules are broken down to smaller ones by the addition of water. And the second process condensation, large molecules are built up from smaller ones by the removal of water. Again, the process again. When the rat eats the maize, the starch in maize will break down to smaller molecules. Those smaller molecules are called the glucose subunits. So when large mo molecules of glucose are built up to produce glycogen, this process is called condensation. So as you notice, hydrolysis and condensation are opposite processes. Okay. Okay, now we said all organic molecules contain the elements carbon and hydrogen. So, do you know CH4? CH4, actually it's methane and it's the simplest organic molecules which contain carbon and hydrogen. And more complex organic molecules also contain oxygen. So let's explain each organic molecule to understand the biological function, which depends on its shape and structure. So some organic molecules contain only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So some of them only contains those three molecules, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, such as carbohydrates, and lipids. So lipids and carbohydrates contain only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. But some molecules like amino acids contain carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, 
nitrogen and sometimes sulfur so proteins or amino acids contain the main the main molecules carbon hydrogen oxygen and nitrogen and sometimes there will be sulfur okay and the last group which is a nucleic acid a nucleic acid actually contains carbon carbon actually it's in each corner carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen and also phosphate so phosphate it's as a group and so we have phosphorus p okay so those are the four groups as we said uh, carbohydrates contain carbon hydrogen oxygen lipids contain carbon hydrogen oxygen um amino acids or proteins contain carbon hydrogen oxygen and nitrogen and sometimes sulfur and the last group nucleic acid contain carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen and phosphorus okay now in this chart we are going to explain the hydrolysis and condensation of the main four organic molecules which are carbohydrates lipids proteins and the nucleic acid so first molecule which is carbohydrates before everything here you have to know that the simplest form of carbohydrates are called monosaccharides and the complex carbohydrates or which contain more than one monosaccharide are called polysaccharides so here in this diagram carbohydrates as we say we have the symbol monosaccharide which is glucose so the property of a glucose here that glucose is soluble so it it's easily transported in blood and dissolves in the cytoplasm of cells so monosaccharides example of monosaccharides is glucose glucose is soluble so it can transport easily in blood and dissolve in the cytoplasm of cells now when monosaccharides condense that will produce polysaccharides such as starch and a glycogen so polysaccharides are formed from many monosaccharide molecules such as starch and glycogen both are polysaccharides made of many thousands of glucose molecules so one glucose molecule is called monosaccharide when one more than one monosaccharide connect together they will produce polysaccharides such as starch or glycogen the process of producing polysaccharides is called condensation so the property of polysaccharides here that polysaccharides are insoluble so they are good stores of energy and can form important structures such as cellulose cell walls so as we said before that the cell wall of the plant are made of cellulose so cellulose of the cell wall of the plant is made of polysaccharides and the polysaccharides here insoluble so they are good stores of energy okay what about the second group which is lipid lipids okay lipids are formed by condensation of three molecules of fatty acid with one molecule of glycerol as we said before that lipids form are formed by three fatty acids and one glycerol when they connect to each other they will produce lipids or fats okay so here we have three fatty acids and one glycerol when they condense 
they will produce the fat. So all fats which are solid at room temperature, as we said before, the fats are solid at room temperature and oils liquid at room temperature, actually they are insoluble in water. As a result, they are excellent stores of energy and form barriers between watery environments such as between a cell and its surrounding. So here, explain or say why fats are excellent stores of energy. Actually, because they are insoluble in water. So when they are insoluble, that will make them store the energy and transport it between more than one environment, such as a cell and its surrounding. Okay, this is the second group. What about the third group, protein? So proteins are made up of long chains of subunits called amino acids. So more than one amino acid joined together in particular sequence which are coded by genes. Okay, so here we have more than one amino acid. They connect together to form the protein. Some are long and thin, and some of them have egg-shaped or spherical. So a long and thin protein, proteins are called keratin. We found it in hair and nails, and the other shape, egg-shaped or spherical. So the function of proteins depends on this shape. So amino acids are soluble, so they are easily transported in living organisms and can take part in reactions in the watery cytoplasm of the cell. So amino acids here are soluble in water, so they are easily transported in living organisms. Because as you know, that most of our body is liquid. So if they are soluble, so they can transport from in the living organism. Okay, what about the last one, which is nucleic acid? Nucleic acid, actually, we found it in DNA. These chains are coiled around one another to form a double helix. So here we have double helix. The sequence of bases forms a code which carries the genetic information. So DNA carries the genetic information. This code is passed from one generation to the next and instructs a cell or an organism to carry out a particular task. So nucleic acid, we found it in DNA, which contains code this code carries the genetic information. So we have again four organic molecules, which are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and the nucleic acids. So thank you for listening and please answer the questions of the lesson. Thank you.